Baker Lake is one of Canada's better known Arctic communities. It's famous for both its artists and its industry. But on any given day, life here looks a lot like anywhere else in small town Canada. Community events are the main attraction. <laughs> Pretty much everyone is crazy about hockey. And family is everything. But along with the good comes the challenges. The same ones that burden communities across Canada's Arctic. Everywhere um, there's a suicide problem. What we experienced in the past, the residential school and relocation, not, uh, the loss of culture and language uh, has really affected us. Separation from families, like when I went to residential school, I was nine, and from there on, I only saw my parents like two months of the year. Nunavut's premier pledged this week to tackle an epidemic of suicide. The risks are particularly high in Inuit communities. Inuit communities range from five to 25 times the national rate. But while we hear about the issues, we don't often hear much about what happens after the headlines and how people in many of these Arctic communities are working to make things right. Good morning, Manasit. The Manixajit project began in 1989 after the tsunami of disclosures made by victims of Eric de Jaeger, a convicted pedophile who wreaked havoc across northern Canada where he worked as a priest in the 1970s and 80s. I got very angry actually when these children were abused, sexually abused in the community. I decided to. to try and do something about it. Though therapists were brought in from southern Canada at the time, it was clear that in the long term, it wouldn't be enough. When you bring a uh, therapist in to a small community, they don't stay. They bring their own way of counseling, or they call it maybe a way. A lot of programs get started up by people that, are, that come in, and then sometimes they die out as people leave, and the, loses interest. The fact that we've been in operation for so long and will continue to be here is, you know, it's a staple in the community that people always know that there's some place to go to. Mianik Sajid gets the majority of its funding from the federal and territorial governments and is run by a volunteer board. Now, the project does everything from counseling and community education to traditional skills courses and trips out on the land. What Miana Seat has done is combine Inuit traditional knowledge and Southern way of counseling mm -hmm. together. I think it's important that um, the community take ownership of their own healing. They also offer services in English and in Uktitut. When a client wants to talk one-on-one, -on -one, and this is where we, we are, Hattie Manick is Maniksajit's community worker. They open up more about, especially when they're speaking in Inuktitut. They start showing their emotions, their anger. A Baker Lake woman who asked to be called Doris says the Maniksajit project helped save her life. I always felt I was alone. Gray, nothing but gray. It's a heavy issue, you know. You want to deny it, but yet you can't. Um, you want to erase it, but yet that's impossible. So I'm very glad to have men see it here in my community. It's like, how do I describe it? Water for a thirsty child. Simeon Migingwak is the Nunavut MLA for the Baker Lake riding. He says he's heard countless stories like Doris's since Mianik Sajit began. The Mianik Sajit project, I find, is very unique in Nunavut. I guess the model that they have to provide counseling services was created 
within the community. So it's more reflective of the needs that are required. I live with the people and I've seen people from being heartbroken and whatnot and where they're living a positive life now today. So it really does make a change. Joan Cashla is a pastor at the Glad Tidings Church in Baker Lake. She's also a community probation officer. She says she refers 70 to 80% of her clients to the Minyaksajit project and has seen the good it's done firsthand. It's very challenging to have permanent uh, counselors in small communities, especially in remote communities like Baker Lake. The mental health workers don't stay very long. Clients do not wish to constantly repeat themselves to new workers. Whereas in Mianxi, they start from uh, square one. When their probation expires, some of them have actually told me they're gonna keep going there. Even if they don't have to go there, they know that the doors are always open. Kashla says she'd like people outside of Baker Lake to look at the good the project does and to help it expand. There are so many issues, so many problems, not only in the communities, but across Nunavut. There is so much help needed in our communities. Why is there no treatment center in the region? Why is there no treatment center in Nunavut? With uh, assistance from the federal government, not just the Nunavut government, but from the federal government as well, I really believe that Manerji could expand their services to work towards becoming a treatment center, something that the Inuit has been crying for for a number of years. Kudlu says the challenges are still many, but that community-run programs incorporating traditional culture and values into mental health services is the first step to healing not only for Baker Lake, but for Inuit communities across Canada. I had a father who was lost for 28 days on the land at age 81, and he survived. So I tell young people when they're talking about suicide, Look at my father who did everything to survive. So I think it makes them think, you know. It's a lot to do with your identity that you had back then and the self-sufficiency of surviving on the land. I always say there's hope we will survive. Same.